Okay. <clears throat> Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Pixie again, and if you're new here, welcome. My name is Pixie. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whatever you're doing when you're watching this, everybody, obviously and safely, and take care of yourself and your loved ones. And... We are just continuing the Bell cosplay. I was extremely sick for two weeks. I even recorded while I was sick. So I just wanted to get better because it got worse. I'm on medication now. I'm not feeling like a thousand percent right now, but I'm feeling better than I was. So where we left off was the skirt. Sabine Dean did compromise the skirt I bought and I was about to take this layer and attach it to the skirt, but I think what we're going to do is I'm going to make this a separate petticoat. So this is the one that has the tool built in because I think it'd just be easier to do separate skirts and then figure out how to like layer them so they're not bunched up at the waistline where the skirt sits. But I was also re-watching Beauty and the Beast last night, the OG version, just to see the ballroom scene, like the, the dance, and how the skirt flowed. And I know it's an animated film, but I was trying to think about, I was trying to think about how the skirt flowed, and when she twirls, the skirt follows her when she stops twirling, which I know it's animation. I'm going to reiterate that right now, so we're going to make this as lifelike as possible, like a nice translation from animated to my vision. It looks like she's wearing a hoop skirt. However, I don't really want to invest in a hoop skirt, which I should be in a costume or I should have at least one in my wardrobe slash collection. What I'm gonna do tonight is I'm going to try to build up the skirt as much as I can to get it as full as I can, but yet comfortable to wear without committing to said hoop skirt because I do have a lot of like 50s and 60s petticoats that could work also for layering just for they're just in my collection they just kind of sit there if you saw the short a couple weeks ago I did a whole petticoat collection but yeah so I'm gonna basically put an elastic casing in the top of this and we're just gonna build the skirt tonight and hopefully not run into run into any literal snags let's get started cool and if we get far enough, I might also start working on the sleeves for the bodice if we get that far tonight. I think I just want to focus on the skirt. Because as you remember, probably if you saw the first two parts, I did stitch this up where the zipper was. So we just have a skirt slash petticoat slash underskirt. Like I said, look at all that floofy tool. And we'll just make it a slip-on elastic cased underskirt awkward video yay so bear with me as I said I am still sick I already have the elastic that I cut to measure myself let's freaking do this um, like I said I just cut this elastic piece to fit my hips like go over my hips and fit my waist and then some just so it can cross over like that and sew that and then finish up the skirt so I'm going to sew I'm going to sew a casing for it so you just fold over when you have a skirt like this and you need to replace the elastic or make a new elastic you can just fold it over and make it even like it's hard to see but it's folded over there because it's just yellow on yellow um, I'm terrible at this tonight. I'm so sorry. Let's just get started. You're just going to see what I'm doing in the clip. Anyways, okay, bye.
tried to fight with my sewing machine a little bit, but that was a user error because um, when you buy a spool of thread, sometimes they put a little notch in the spool so it doesn't unravel, so it's easier to store, and that way you just don't have a mass of tangled threads in your box or your shelf. You can barely see it, but it's right here, that way. When the spool was on my sewing machine, it kept catching on that notch and it started to snag the fabric and the thread just started getting jammed. So I literally had to stop and reverse the spool so it wouldn't get caught on that. So anyway, we have the casing. It's not even, it's not pretty just because the skirt was so asymmetrical when I cut it off the dress. But the casing is just to hold the elastic in and since it's an underskirt slash petticoat style skirt, it doesn't matter. You're not going to see it. Um, I'm just cutting the loose threads away, but you can see the stitches are pretty clean. And it's a very sheer yellow fabric. But like I said, all that matters is the tool and the poof. So this does not have to be perfect. So now I'm going to take this elastic. And the easiest way to do this, and this was a trick my mom taught me, was you put a big safety pin. If you don't have the actual like elastic casing tool, which it's, once you figure out the trick, you don't need one of those, but I have one somewhere. I can just never find it. You put a big safety pin on one end and then you put a big safety pin on the other and you leave a gap where you're doing your elastic casing. And this is by no means like the professional way to do it, I'm sure. It's just the way I was taught to do it. And it's so easy if you just need a quick fix or if you're like taking elastic out of something. And when you're doing a casing, you leave a gap big enough to feed the elastic through. And then you just feed until you, the elastic comes together and then you pin it together and sew it together and then your casing is done and then you close the gap. So you're about to see what I'm doing anyway, but this is a skirt. We're getting there. Elastic. Trying not to lose my patience, <laughs> but sewing. It is a trial of patience every time. Even if things are going your way, you're still going to run into something that you didn't think you would, and then you have to figure it out, and then you move on. But it's worth it in the end. The, the result is always going to be worth it. So let's do the elastic and try this bad boy on. Let's do this.
So we made some progress on the skirt. I think it's pretty fluffy. Um, still not 100% sold on if I want to buy a hoop skirt or not. If I think it's not poofy enough, we'll just try it with a petticoat before I commit. I mean, I did look at hoop skirts, this one and this one. Um, I kind of like the ruffles better. And it's affordable, even though I was doing this on a budget with what I have. But anyways. Sorry about that. There was a semi across the street doing semi things, so I wasn't sure if it was picking up on the camera. Anyways. <sighs> okay. So, I don't even know where I was. We have the underskirt done. And now we're going to go to the overskirt. And I'm going to create some pickups. But I think I have to wear the skirt to see where I want the pickups to be. And then I'll like pin them in place and just kind of like hand sew them. And then I'm going to put some kind of embellishment over it and make sure like the snags that Sabine Bean left in the fabric. And if they're still visible when I do the pickups on the other skirt, we will figure something out because, okay, this is such an awkward angle for me, but I just need to see where the snags in said fabric is or are. Let's just do it, okay? <laughs> I'm going to show you me with the skirt on and trying to pin the pickups where I want them to be and then cut this overlay with the beading. Do you remember that from part two? Cut this into shapes to do an overlay so it's all sparkly and pretty and more flowy. I may not need the hoop skirt after this is done or the petticoat because that's a lot of fabric. Um, 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 let's revisit this, and of course, these, it's just like sequin ribbon, sequin on a string, maybe red roses, I don't know, let's do the pickups and see where we're left, what's left after that, so yeah, okay, shut up Sarah, move on.